For me, theater has been a, an important part of my life since I was uh, in junior high school where I had a teacher who uh, realized that I was not good in sports and so she wanted me to uh, try out for a play and from the time I tried out for that play, which was Dickens' Christmas Carol, in which I played Everest near Scrooge, why uh, I was given the opportunity to explore different worlds and at the same time find a sense of self-confidence in myself and uh, expand my cultural world and uh, it's not only been entertainment but it has also been uh, educational for me as well and hopefully I've been able to show that same thing to kids for the past 35 years in teaching uh, public school and directing shows. I had a theater at one time in 84 at the, at the Ritz in New Holland and I ran that for a year. Lost my shirt, $11,000 in debt, and the uh, bank was really nice that they helped me through that whole crisis. But we tried it. Here is a story about a person whose goal wasn't to be the best, or to make a lot of money, or to be famous like a celebrity. His goal has always been to strive for excellence. This desire for excellence is his driving force. And if you would take this story and write a book about it, and if someone wrote the music, perhaps it would become a Broadway show. This is the story of Stan Dean. For the past 30 years, with his vision and the support of Garden Spot High School, parents, friends, and the great community of New Holland, Pennsylvania, high school theater has been alive and well. In fact, one could say that high school theater is thriving here in the heart of Amish country. Not many. Uh, I just uh, started uh, letting people know that uh, it's, and it's actually 35. But it's 30 years at Garden Spot. Then. Yes, 30 yeah. years at Garden Spot. And uh, the few people that I said I would retire, they said, no, nah, you won't retire. You'll be here until <laughs> till the school remodels again. And this would be like, uh, no, I don't think so. I think I would, uh, I think I really need to move on. And I don't call it retirement. I call it like a change of uh, jobs or looking at a new profession. I have some other students who teach theater and speech in colleges in uh, Virginia and down in Maryland. And a lot of other ones have gone into sales. Uh, some have become uh, ministers. And so there's a, there's a variety of people there. Uh, some have gone on to teach dance. Some have gone on to uh, do costuming for the San Francisco Opera Company. Uh, some sing with uh, opera companies in Texas. And what's really neat is, all the times you'll hear from these people, and you'll notice know, so, yeah. the first question, are you still there? <laughs> yeah, I'm still here. I'm still here. And uh, now it's sort of like, uh, well, I'm thinking of moving on, you know, with my life. But uh, a lot of, a lot of neat young kids, and you know, and that's a rural school, and it's like, uh, it's, it's not a city suburban school, and sometimes everybody, you know, sort of puts it down. But a lot of talent. There's a lot of talent in. Uh, in Garden Spot, and uh, so I feel really fortunate that I've had an opportunity to direct about 94 shows just at Garden Spot. Musicals, comedies, dramas, and children's theater. And uh, I mean, we were one of the first schools to try to do things like a Man for All Seasons, a uh, Lion in the Winter. We did Thomas Wolfe's uh, Look Homeward Angel. And sometimes I bit up more than I could chew. But I always said it was fun to be challenged, and I think kids need to be challenged. And I'll tell you, the kids would stick with me the whole time. I mean, it was rough sometimes. It was really, really difficult. And we had a school that really was behind me 100%. You know, when they saw that it was going to work, interesting thing. When I first went there, the skeptics said, the people in New Holland will never support anything like this. This is a farm community, and they don't like theater. And I said, uh, well, we're going to give it a try. And so my very first show was a little play called Curious Savage back in 1967. And we ran it for two nights, and we had a great audience. And then we did our first musical, Carousel. And uh, after that, the program grew from two plays to three plays to four shows a year. And I did that for nine years. 
and then I found out it was a little much <laughs> to do that. But uh, a lot of talent, a lot of talent went through that. So are you helping Mr. Spitter? Yes, I am okay. his voiceover Sadly, person, and he's now? taping me right Yeah. Thank you. Did you read everything about everything? Not everything. Okay. Yeah. And uh, so... Uh, so I feel that uh, it's really been a tremendous experience over 30 years of being in one school to see all this talent, you know, come and go and go out to the community or go into Broadway or just work locally and they become a dominant figure in the community. I saw shows even before I came to Garden Spot. While I was in elementary school, I came to see shows here and I always knew that I wanted to be up there someday. So I was involved since seventh grade, from seventh through twelfth grade. As a part of GSPA. And I'm thinking, no, I want this to be 7 through 12, sometimes even elementary school. When I did The King and I, we went to the elementary school and brought in loads of little kids. And, uh, and it really worked because it became not just a school project, but it became a community project because there was such a cross-section of the community. The other thing I like about theater is the fact that you may have a student who does not excel, say, in acting, but they can help build a set, they can help make a costume, they can run the box office, they can do lighting. And where we're buying a sport, you've got to have the skill to go out there and be on the varsity and play. And here, we can take and train kids as we go along. Here we go. Now, you two constantly touch. You never, arm around her now, arm, okay, your hand on his leg. Your hand on her, your hair, your hand on her hand. Uh, that's it. No, on her hand, not her leg. Okay, let's not get carried away, Julian. Okay. Now, uh, could you move in, Meg? Thank you. It look, okay, thank you. Okay. Now, and could you now reach up and touch his cheek? Over these 30 years, there have been so many different facets that, that, have, that have come together as a result of GSPA or Gardens by Performing Arts and then uh, you know and you have all these people wanting to get involved and the other thing was that once we did that cross-section of kids was to get as many of parents many as parents adults uh, the community clubs organizations and say oh yeah we'll support this and so and so I, I really feel fortunate that I worked in a community that supported a program like that and you know and it has changed I mean you know you have your high moments in something and then you have your low moments and high moments and uh, you know people call, talk about the golden age of GSPA well that was you know that was in the early 70s I mean there was a period there of seven years where we were going gung-ho you know four shows a year and we had like ten twelve thousand dollars in our budget just to, to play with now that has changed a lot and one of the things that has made it change is the whole concept of kids working and it's like now they, there's not as much time that they have to go out and have a job and so you sort of work your plays around kids activities like doing Little Women right now for the first time in my life I'm gonna hold rehearsals Monday nights Friday nights and Saturday mornings take me back 20 years ago it was Monday night Tuesday night Thursday night Friday and Saturday mornings but you can't do that anymore so I have to adapt and with theater you can. Now a sport you couldn't do that with. It's like you'll be here, you know, for your five nights or you, you can't play. We're going to start with an adaptation of Louise May Alcott's Little Women because uh, I just think these kids need to go back to some classic literature and also have a costume play. Let's start here. Uh, yes, I was just going. Please. Okay, boom, boom. Thank you. Will see me to my coach so night. Good night, Marmy. Good night, children. Uh, good night, Mother, and I'll look after Amy. When you look back over 30 years at one school, uh, I now have students who I had their parents <laughs> back in the 70s. And uh, right, right now I have a situation whereby uh, some of the students that I have, their parents were actively involved, and we were doing a, a show called uh, Music Man. And in that show, why there was the, uh, the dance sequence and so forth, and anyhow, this young fellow um, became very um, much acquainted with one of the young ladies in the cast, and uh, that is where they met. And it's like they met there, they started dating, 
and now they're married and they have uh, you know their four children and the oldest one is now a senior and now she is involved and the brother is now in ninth grade and he's involved and it's like we always talk about when they were in GSPA and I remember and this is this is so strange to me Dave it's like they brought their baby their first baby to my home in this you know when they were married and now that baby is now going to be starring in Little Women as the character of Joe. We better get this little passion in the bud, haven't we? Why, no, of course we can! Why the idea? We don't want any more married in this family for years to come! Oh, mercy! What are the children thinking about these days? Well, it is a fast age. I don't know what we're coming to, ma'am. Opening night, as I recall, uh, might be considered our our first date or something. Uh, everybody was going around giving each other the traditional good luck kisses, and um, as Nelson gave me one, it was a little bit different than the ones I was getting from everybody else. <laughs> so. Um, Are you yeah. saying that's the first night that I kissed you? I think it is, as yeah, a matter of fact. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. He he just had a way of not only seeing the talent in people, but I think seeing what it, what he thought would be a good match. It's probably the director, you know. I ask questions to them, and they were answering me, and it's like, oh, wow. And it's the same in a play. Like, when you're sitting around with somebody, you know, ask them, you know, how do you see me in the play? How do you see me as the character? And then the next person says, well, how do you see me? And then ask somebody else, like, wonder what, what do you think Mr. Lawrence thinks of the girls? Who is your favorite? Everybody, places. How much more time? Sister Wash and I were discussing it over here. <laughs> what are they talking about? <laughs> what is it, Teddy? Do you look wicked? Alf would be a bad boy. What mischief have you been up to now? Please, ma'am, I'm going to get married. Using parents. Uh, just really helps to heighten and it brings ideas from parents and students uh, together and helping with helping with sets right now I basically have all parents or adults from the community who come in and uh, help out in these different positions building sets doing costumes and uh, just taking care of the lighting and, and all those different aspects so, uh, so it's always been, it's been a family thing. If you talk to a kid who's been involved in GSP, he'll say, this is my other family. This is my, my school family. This is the group that I, I get to, uh, to show another side of myself to. So uh, I think that means a lot. I, I usually get up at uh, 5.30 in the morning. And uh, when I, I get up, do the basic things, and then I uh, make myself a bowl of cereal. Usually a slice of banana and uh, a cup of coffee and a glass of water and uh, by 6.30 I'm ready to leave the house, get to school about uh, quarter after seven and then I start TV station and try to do stuff for my classes and by eight o'clock uh, I'm ready to go with my first period class and then my day is I teach two periods and then I have a period for the television station and then I have a period for my own classroom preparation and then what I do is teach periods five, six, seven, eight. And in that I do basically English Lit. I do two 10th grade uh, literature sections. And I do three advanced public speaking sections. When that part of the day is over, it's about uh, quarter three. And then I have GSPA rehearsals. And sometimes I have it after school. Sometimes I come home in the evening after school. And then I go back again and then rehearse till about uh, 9.30, quarter of 10. Get back home again around 10.30, quarter of 11, and sit down, relax, read my mail, and watch a little television, maybe read a book, and go to bed about 11.30, quarter of 12, and get up again the next morning at 5.30. And I've done that for 30 some years. <laughs> Mr. 
mainly because we did a children's theater. The first thing I did, I played Mr. White Cat in a production of Hansel and Gretel. And we took it to, um, I remember we took it to a children's hospital, which was quite remarkable, uh, being that I was in eighth grade. And uh, I mean, it, it was just amazing to me, first of all, to go into a children's hospital uh, being healthy and, and uh, full of energy and to seeing kids that were up to their neck in, in uh, body casts. And, and we would go to the rooms and, and bring the kids to the, to the auditorium to see the show. So it was quite remarkable for, for, the, for what I was exposed to because of doing the show. The show itself was, was remarkable in that uh, uh, I started out being a cat, and uh, I went on and I became a cat in Cats later. So it was a, uh, it was a full circle. <laughs> <laughs> Chorus line kicks are not the same height. They need you need to figure out if you're going to kick high or kick low. I want my dancer couples up front, okay? Just make sure. And the chorus people that happen to get in the front, just move back behind the dancers. Girls, could you all take hold of your skirts, take one foot, and just go straight down? Don't do this. And then some of you. Girls, you could even do this as you're curtsying. And Sally can help you with this if you have trouble balancing. You could take one arm up. Mm -hmm. Guys, guys, when you're, you know, and you're doing this, that'd be so nice. And then hold the freeze for the picture. Curtain comes down, audience applause. They love it. They're going out to have soft drinks. My whole cast uh, knows their script without uh, using books. And uh, so we have about three weeks to actually polish and put uh, the final touches on the uh, production, which has been uh, a lot of fun. A lot of fun. We started back in January, and now we have uh, these final three weeks to put it with the orchestra, with the chorus, the dancers, all the aspects of staging and uh, just putting the fine tuning on the whole production. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. And the neat thing about it is uh, it hasn't been one of those tiring things where you have to constantly beg people to come to rehearsals and get to rehearsals it's like uh, they, they've just been there and so that's why we're so far ahead I mean I've had a wonderful choreographer and uh, so it's gonna be a bright bouncy splendiferous there's a good word show <laughs> I love the theater. I love it. I love everything that can go wrong with theater and television. As as much as to things to the audience may seem to go right, to the actors or the, the news anchors, things just no one has any idea how wrong things go sometimes. I love I love the adrenaline rush when you know that uh oh you have to cover for someone or you, you know just it's it's incredible the things that go on with anything live. The kids, are, the kids are challenging, and the kids are fun. Too many adults look at kids as being the pain and the, hmm? And it's like, no, no, they're just reflecting what the adults have done over the years to them. And now we're paying for, well, oh yeah, kids, go ahead, go and be free and do this. And it's like, I love the kid who's off the wall. And I know some people are just like, Whoosh! and I'm like, no, 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 that's the kid that I like. See, and I'm thinking the Steven Spielbergs, you know, the Bill Gates, um, you know, you look, the Ron Howards. I often wonder what they were like in high school. And I'll bet they drove their teachers crazy, you know. And so I look at the kids that drive me into that sense of insanity, but there's something exciting about it. All those dark lines down your face. Yeah, yeah we're ready. The last one, we're ready. We better be. I love wow. you, Mr. Dean, always. Last show. Can I give you a lip mark right here? No. No. <laughs> Check it out. This is better so, than mine. I do want you to know that uh, Garden Spot has meant a lot to me. And uh, 
you have regardless, you know, there's a lot of times you, you just really want to give up. You don't give up. You stick it out and you stay, you stay with the, the focus of what it is that you want in your own heart. And if there's anything I would really encourage you all to do, have some visions and dreams for what you can become. Because everybody sitting in this room has been given certain abilities, certain talents, and aspirations. And I would hope that you would use those to their fullest, wherever you go. Thanks for everything, but I think our biggest thanks goes to Mr. D for putting this together. This will be the last time we'll be together like this. Uh, so I would like to close, and what a better way to close, than with a word of prayer, and just, you know, thank God that we've had a wonderful, wonderful time, and hopefully you've made some wonderful friendships that will last for a lifetime. Uh, hopefully that has always been my dream, that the kids who work in GSPA carry out something positive from this whole thing of a friendship or something else, and to make it work.
Wait till you see the polo grounds. It makes our ballpark look like a sandlot. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. For it's one, two, three strikes you're around at the old ball game. still carry that enthusiasm and the energy that he had a garden spot into other ventures and, and other places but I hope someplace uh, in the back of it all there's still a little bit of room that he can leave for garden spot and all the, the people and all the memories that he has here and that he's that he feels that this is a place that he can still come back and hang his hat and spend some time uh, this time not with the same pressures that he, he would have while he was here as a teacher and while he was here as a director but I, I still hope that Stan keeps contact with us and I can assure Stan that a lot of people will go with him uh, with very fond memories so I, I only wish Stan the very best in the future. Thank you. I thank this cast in particular, but uh, to Garden Spot, thanks for 30 great years. Now there you are. Yes, there's that face. That face that somehow I trust. It may embarrass you to hear me say it, but say I must, say it I must. You have the cool, clear eyes of a thinker of wisdom and truth. Yet there's that upturned chin and the grin of impetuous youth. <laughs> oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. I hear the sound of good, solid judgment whenever you talk, and you certainly do enough of that, don't you? Yet with the bold, brave spring of the tiger that quickens your walk. <laughs> oh, I believe in you. I believe in you. And when my faith in my fellow man all but falls apart, here we go. I want to feel your hand grasping mine, and I take. 
seeker of wisdom and truth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yet with the slam, bang, tag, reminiscence of gin and vermouth. Yeah, you said, no, 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 The year is over, and GSPA has had a smashing season. Thanks to all who helped out, and especially thanks to Stan Dean. Like we said, if you would write the story about these 30 years and put it to music, perhaps it would be a hit show. For this, we'll have to wait and see. For now, Stan Dean is our celebrity, here in the heart of Amish country. Thanks for 30 years of great high school theater. We truly believe in you.